Hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another excellent adventure in the Let's Build That App.com channel. I uh, really hope you're having a marvelous afternoon. Now, today's video, we are going to talk about a pretty serious topic. And uh, the topic is going to be covering the idea of MVVM programming using Swift UI. And uh, you know it's going to be a serious topic because I'm actually wearing a black polo shirt. Now, some of you guys might not know exactly why you want to use MVVM, but basically, when you're developing an iOS application, you'll notice that you'll end up with a lot of view code, right? And any non-related view logic should really belong in some other class and not your views. So the way we're going to do this is to introduce this external object called a view model. Uh, this might sound a little bit confusing if you're not used to this style of programming, but some of the new additions to Swift UI makes this process really easy. Okay, uh, before we dive into any type of coding, why don't I give you a quick example as to uh, what kind of application we can build out. So hopefully you can see my screen on the left side here. Uh, we have the good old iPhone XR simulator running iOS 13, and it basically, uh, take a look at what happens when I hit the fetch courses button on the top right. Uh, you'll see that the application right here will remove everything, right? And what it's really doing is I'm fetching some data from an external JSON API somewhere. And once I have my JSON fetched, I decode all of my course objects right here. And through something called a binding, the UI will automatically refresh with all of these objects inside of this list here. So the way I'm doing this is to utilize something called MVVM. I'm also using something called observable objects and published annotations inside of Swift UI. So a lot of these terms are going to sound pretty new to you. So today's video, I'm going to try to explain exactly how this works one step at a time. All right, I'm going to move this guy out of the way and let me shrink this guy into the corner here. And the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to open up a new project right here. And I'm going to launch this inside of the simulator that I have off screen. And hopefully you guys can see what's going on. I'm looking at my recording and it looks a-okay. Okay, so this application, what exactly do we have so far? Uh, basically, we have some kind of API URL right here that helps us get the JSON data. Uh, we'll use this later on inside of our content view. We have a scroll view here that contains a uh, very simple text that you're seeing right now. Uh, hello everyone from YouTube. And we have the navigation bar title says courses. And on the right side, uh, we have the fetch courses button right here. So this is a button for navigation bar items on trailing, which is going to be on the right over here. Okay, so again, running this, you'll get a very simple uh, text in the middle and the button right here. Every time you press it, you see fetch JSON data all the way down at the bottom here because of this print statement there. Okay, all this stuff is kind of a boilerplate code, if that's what you wanna call it. And the first thing I wanna do uh, before I introduce the JSON fetching, the parsing, the decoding, is to kind of go over a very simple example of how you set up this MVVM reactive style programming inside of your app. So the way I'm going to do this is to introduce this external object here. And uh, typically you call this uh, object a view model. So it doesn't really matter what you call it, but I guess I'll follow convention for today's lesson. And this guy is going to be a class object and uh, it has to be a class. So just make sure to call it a class. And this guy, I'm going to call it a courses view model. And the super class is going to be an observable object here. And I'll show you what that allows you to do in just a moment. Uh, for the view model, I'm simply going to say var and messages and set it equal to something. And let's say messages inside observable object. And then for this message right here, I actually want to monitor when it changes. And the way you do that is to introduce this publish annotation here. And then finally, inside of my content view, right? I want to utilize this course view model somehow. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a var and let's say the courses view model equals courses view model, a brand new instance of this object here. Okay, now the last thing I kind of need to do is to make sure that the binding is working correctly with my courses view model. 
I'm going to replace this text right here. Hello from YouTube. Let's replace this. And let's say courses view model. Uh, let's just say messages right here. And I'm going to run this right now. You're going to see this message, messages inside of observable object, really hard sentence to say. Uh, but that's what you're seeing right here, right? Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is because I have this view model object set up like this, I can actually make the UI automatically refresh. Let's say if I click this button, right? I want to change this message right here. What I can do is I can go inside of the navigation bar uh, button right here. I'm going to say courses view model. And for the view model, let's just say uh, messages equals to something else, say uh, something else. And I'm going to run right now. Let's just make sure to fix this with a self in front of that. And what do you think is going to happen when I hit this fetch courses button right now? Are you going to see this message or are you going to see this message, right? Uh, I'm going to hit that right now. And you can see that even though we change the messages to something else, the string, the UI is still showing the previous message right here. Now, the reason why it's doing that is because we're still missing one more thing. And that's this observed object right here. And why don't we just spend a couple of seconds to read the documentation. Uh, a dynamic view property that subclasses the observable object, automatically invalidating the view when it changes. So that sounds like a mouthful, but uh, once you set up this uh, course's VM as an observed object, the UI is going to look at this object and whenever the properties inside of it changes, so basically this message is right here, whenever it changes, right, it's going to automatically update the UI. So click on that. You'll see this right here now says something else because we modified it right here. And then the UI is constantly observing this object now. Okay, so this is one like a very fundamental concept of MVVM programming. And again, the reason why you want to do this is because when you're writing a pretty sophisticated application such as this, right, we're going to introduce a lot of JSON fetching code. And there's really nowhere inside of here that you can introduce the JSON fetch. I mean, technically you can do it inside of this button action right here but you never really want to introduce uh, data fetching logic inside of your view code because things just start to get really messy. So instead of putting it in your view, you want to put it inside of this external view model object. Now, the reason why it's called a view model is because this object right here is supposed to reflect the state of your UI, or I guess uh, technically more correct is your view right here is supposed to reflect what your course uh, view model actually contains in terms of its properties. Okay, so that is the basic idea. And let me kind of turn this example into something more real world here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and modify this guy. And you know, you can actually change this, in a, uh, change this into a method instead. So change message. And let me just do that. And inside of here, I'm going to say function and change message. Let's just say self.messages equals blah, blah, blah. And I will run this again. You'll see that we're just going to call this and it's going to do pretty much the same thing. So hit that. It's going to fetch or, you know, change the message right here and automatically update the UI. Okay, so hopefully you are able to understand what's going on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fetch these JSON objects here through this magical, magical URL. Uh, if you want to see what's inside of it, obviously you can just paste it in here. And so that's not what I want. <laughs> we want to use this instead. So hopefully Google is going to allow me to load that. And let's see, that is what I want. Hopefully you can get rid of the uh, quotations. And here is the JSON uh, objects. So basically the banner is this image here. We have the name full stack social iOS Node.js. That's right there. And then, you know, so on and so forth with the rest of these objects here. So what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to fetch these objects and then inside of my UI here, I'm going to show all those objects. Uh, I might not be able to show you how to fetch the images because that's, <laughs> that's a little bit complicated. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take this API URL, right? Inside of this change messages, uh, why don't we call this something else that makes a lot more sense. So let's say function uh, fetch courses. 
and we are going to set up some code and inside of here, fetch JSON and decode and update some array property. So what I'm going to do is this array property I have right here, I'm going to declare some kind of array. So published and var, let's say courses, and this guy will be some kind of course object array. And uh, let's just start it off as blank for now. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use some kind of struct to represent the course objects inside of my JSON. And this guy needs to be some kind of decodable. And this is also going to declare some kind of name. And I think that's all I want for now. Uh, for any objects inside of Swift, right? Most of the time, if you want to use it in some kind of vertical list, you need it to be identifiable. And it might sound a little bit complicated, but <laughs> once you see this enough, it starts to make sense. Uh, when you have this identifiable thing, you need some kind of ID. So let's just declare a default UUID. And you know, whenever an object is created, it just gets automatically generated an ID with this line here. Okay, so now that I have my course object readily set right here, uh, what I can do is inside of my courses view model, right? Instead of declaring this right here, maybe you can do something like this. So let's say uh, course set it equal to some kind of array of objects. You can say init with name and let's say test right here. Why don't we just remove this decodable? I guess I can keep it that way. All right, so let's say course one and let's say course two. And here we have, uh, let's see, course three. Okay, so this course view model is now going to contain a list of a dummy course objects here, one, two, and three. I'm going to take the courses property and I'm going to go down to my view, right? So here's my simple scroll view. I am going to either use a list or some kind of for each loop. It doesn't really matter what. They're pretty much the same. I'm gonna use for each instead because uh, I kind of like this a little more. I'm going to use the courses uh, VM. So VM, courses VM, this guy, and use courses, my array. And I'm going to do this uh, right here. And let's say course in. And for this for each loop, let's just return a text and use the course.name. I believe that's all I need. So if you haven't programmed in Swift UI, uh, you might be a little bit confused about this code, but it should be pretty self-explanatory after a while. We now have course one, two, and three right here. So the last thing I need to do is to actually fetch my courses inside of this uh, course view model courses array. So what exactly do I mean? Well, I need to somehow say URL session, so session dot share dot data task with some kind of completion handler. And let's use this one right here. So all the, a lot of this code is just JSON decoding. So I'll do this really quickly. Uh, Garlet URL string of the API URL else return uh, URL right here. Enter uh, data response and error, and you know make sure to. Make sure to check the error and response. Uh, down here, I'm just going to say uh, self.courses. So that's this object right here. I am going to set it equal to uh, some kind of JSON decoder and decode this guy into a course.self. And for the data, I'm just going to be a little bit uh, not so careful and just use a bang right here. And what I'm going to do finally is I'm going to run the code. This guy right here, it complains about the try catch thing. Uh, just to make this a little bit faster, I'm going to use the try bang, but uh, if this fails, this will crash. So just be aware of that. Why don't I say resume as well? Okay, now what the code looks like is I'm going to hit the fetch courses right here. And instead of using the change message, I'm going to say fetch courses instead. And then it's going to execute this fetch logic from 32 to 39. And let's see fetch courses right here. You will see that you get this purple message right here. So it tells you that uh, whenever you're trying to change the UI, you need to be on the main thread is basically what this is. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this before. And what's really happening is because you have everything bind, uh, bound or binded to this courses thing right here, it's trying to update the UI. 
every time you get the objects back. And so basically you have to say dispatch Q dot main dot async. And this code is just this right here. Paste that in here. And then once you run it again, that purple error will go away. And I'm going to hit fetch courses. And you see all of your courses are now being rendered out inside of the list right here. So full stack, app store, Tinder, fire store. Uh, you can check out these courses uh, on the website if you want to do so. Alrighty guys, I'm going to end the lesson right here, but uh, before I let you go, why don't I just summarize again what exactly we learned in today's lesson. And basically what we're doing inside of this application is we're introducing the concept of view model programming. Inside of Swift UI for your view model object, you want to declare it as a subclass of observable object. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because inside of the actual view, right? We want the UI to bind to the properties of our view model object. And so some of the properties are the messages and the courses. And when we declare these properties as published, what we can do is we can bind to these properties. So we're binding it. Uh, so we're binding to those properties right here and right here. And then also you have to make your view model object here an observed object. So again, there are three things that you have to do observable published and observed object. If you leave out any of these things, uh, your application is probably not going to automatically refresh. So make sure to remember these. Uh, as well as you can, I noticed that Swift UI is changing pretty rapidly. So now that Swift UI is officially released in Xcode 11, I guess they finally settled on the naming convention of this entire concept. So hopefully this doesn't change too much, but uh, I won't be surprised if they modify this a little more in the near future. Okay, uh, hopefully this example helps you out and hopefully you can familiarize yourself a little more with Swift UI and MVVN style uh, reactive programming. Uh, if you want to download the code for this project here, uh, I'm going to include it in the guide section of the website. So you can just type in uh, let's build that app.com slash guides. Uh, I'm going to include it inside of the Swift UI layout essentials. I'll probably pop in another section right here so that you can grab the code along with some, you know, maybe some written explanations such as this on the left here. And so hopefully you check that out. That's going to be it for today's lesson. If you want to see how to load these images on the right side here, uh, maybe I'll go over that in another video as well. If you really want to see it, make sure to leave a comment down below to remind me. And that's going to be it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, -bye guys.